and welcome to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for how I've improved my plushies throughout the years. By no means am I some expert, but I am a sewing hobbyist who's been sewing plushies since 2012. So I thought it might be a nice video to share some tips and tricks that I've picked up from my experience to help others out who may be new to plushie making. With that being said, if you have any other pointers that you want to share, please leave them down in the comments and we can all learn from each other. The first thing I want to talk about is accessories. When I first started sewing, I only used the tools and materials I absolutely needed to be able to make the plush. So this includes items such as fabric, stuffing, thread, glue, scissors, and of course a sewing needle. Basically, I only use the essentials, which in my opinion works very well for some plushies, and honestly, I still make plushies like this now. For example, my latest video, the Narwhal and Octopus plush, I added no extra accessories onto those plushies, and I personally love how they turned out. But for other plushies, adding an accessory can be a game changer. It can add so much cuteness to the plush. For example, when I added a flower onto the turtle's back, and also when I added some flowers and glitter glue onto the unicorn's mane and tail, in my opinion, these accessories brought those plushies to a completely different level. That being said, there are so many accessories you can add to plushies to brighten them up. Accessories can include things such as beads, buttons, ribbon, bows, flowers, pom-poms, and glitter glue. These are just some of the accessories that I've picked up throughout the years. To be honest, I've accumulated quite a lot of accessories and craft supplies throughout the eight years of sewing. As I made more and more sewing projects, the more and more my craft supply grew. I love buying cute accessories when I see them because I never know when they will come in hand for a project. After making a new plushie design, I always experiment with different accessories, trying to see if any of them will make the plush even more special. Next, I want to talk about plastic safety eyes. This kind of goes in line with accessories, but I wanted to talk about it separately because I have quite a bit to say. When I first got into sewing and I watched plushie tutorials, sometimes I would see other creators using these plastic safety eyes, and for quite a while, as embarrassing as it is, I actually didn't use them because for the longest time, I didn't know what they were called. So I couldn't search them online to buy. And after I finally figured out what they were called, I then started to question if they were worth the extra money, since you don't necessarily need them on the plush. At the time, I thought gluing or sewing black circles of material onto the plush was just fine, and I thought I didn't need these plastic safety eyes. That was what I thought until I actually bought myself a container of them, and now I can't imagine making plushies without them. This is just my opinion. I say this all the time in my videos. I love using the plastic safety eyes. I think the difference is night and day. Personally, I think they bring the plush to life and add a glow to them. Safety eyes come in all sorts of different sizes and colors, and they even make plastic noses. It's fun trying out different eye colors on plushies and finding which one looks the best on each plushie design, but from my experience, I usually just end up playing it safe and sticking to the black plastic safety eyes. Not all scissors are good at cutting material. You may think, hey, the pair of scissors I have doesn't necessarily cut the material well, but it cuts it somewhat. It cuts it very slowly, but it's still getting the job done. Trust me, after using a real pair of fabric scissors, you will never want to use those other scissors ever again. Fabric scissors will cut the material so easily with nice clean cuts. Fabric scissors aren't too expensive either. Last I checked on Amazon, you could get a pair for about 9 to 15 US dollars, but you can always shop around and see if there's other stores who sell them even cheaper. Also, they come in a bunch of really cute colors and patterns. I have a pair with zebra stripes on it and I absolutely love it. If you're someone who plans to be sewing a bunch of projects, I personally think it's worth getting yourself a pair of fabric scissors because I find them essential to making a plush, just as much as material, stuffing, thread, and a sewing needle. I love using felt to make my plushies. Felt is so easy to sew with and I find it perfect for the little projects that I typically make on my channel. I've only ever used felt that is made of 100% polyester, which is a synthetic material. Some of the felt I've used is eco-friendly and is made of 100% recycled polyester. After sewing a lot with polyester felt, I have noticed it tends to pill or fuzz quite a bit if you touch or handle it a lot. From my experience, if you're making a plushie that is more for decoration, as in something you'll mainly look at versus touch, polyester felt, in my opinion, is a great option. This can include making plushies that will be used as magnets on your refrigerator, or plushies hanging up in your room, and even plushies hanging up on the Christmas tree as ornaments. However, if you want to make a plushie that is planned to be touched a lot, polyester felt may not be the best option. That is why I usually like using fleece when making my 3D plushies that are more like stuffed animals. 
For the most part, I use solid colored materials, but every now and then I find the perfect project to use pattern material, like the beanie hat and the snowman, and also the wings of the butterfly. Since I've only ever sewn with polyester felt, that is the only type of felt I can really speak to from my experience, but after doing some reading, it looks like wool felt seems to have a higher quality. However, with almost everything, with that higher quality will come a higher cost. I've only ever used polyester felt because that seems to be the only type of felt that the craft stores in my area seem to sell. I'm honestly a bit curious to see the differences in these felts, and hey, maybe I'll make a video about that if you guys are interested. Have you guys ever used any other types of felt or material when sewing plushies? If so, what was your experience? Do you have a favorite material you like to sew with? Let me know down in the comments! The sewing stitches I use include the blanket stitch, bell stitch, running stitch, back stitch, and ladder stitch. I'm not going to teach how to do these stitches in this video, but rather explain when I use each of these stitches. I plan to eventually make a video teaching you guys how to do each of these stitches, and when I do, I'll put it somewhere on the screen for you to go check out. Personally, I like using the blanket stitch around any 2D plushie I make, such as around the panda bear plushie, around the narwhal plushie, and around the teddy bear plushie. I love how the blanket stitch looks, and I use this stitch when I want the stitches to be seen and showcased. It is even fun to sometimes use a color that doesn't exactly match the color of the material to make the stitches stand out even more. My biggest tip to making your blanket stitches look better is to make sure the distance between each stitch is the same and the length of each stitch is the same. It's all about consistency. I like using the fell stitch to attach pieces of material on top of other pieces of material. This includes usually adding detail onto the plush. For example, I use the fell stitch to attach the blue band on the milk carton to the spots on the dinosaur's back, and the white part on the penguin. Just like the blanket stitch, I will use the fell stitch when I want the stitches to be seen. The running stitch is a really neat stitch because it can be used to make really cool shapes and designs. By using the running stitch, you can bunch material up and make a ruffled look. For example, I used it to make the cookies and feet on the bear macaron, and also to make the cupcakes icing and paper liner. I use the back stitch primarily when I'm making a plush I want to turn inside out, meaning I want to hide the stitches and make them as invisible as possible. I found when I use the blanket stitch and turn the plush inside out, the stitches are much more easily seen than when I use the back stitch. The latter stitch is used when you sew most of the plush together, turn it inside out, and still need to sew that small opening closed. The latter stitch is similar to the back stitch in that I will hide the stitch as well. To be completely honest, I struggle with the latter stitch a lot. I will use it when I have to, but for the most part, I will always try to find ways so that I can use the back stitch around the whole plush and instead cut an opening on the plush somewhere else to turn it inside out, then find ways to hide that opening. I use this method with the sushi plush when I cut the hole on the side of the cylinder and then glued that black strip around it to hide that opening. And also when I cut a hole on the side of the cow and then covered that hole with one of the black spots. Basically, I do my best to avoid using the ladder stitch whenever possible, but that is just me since I'm not the best at it. I also like to use a ladder stitch to attach two plushies together. So for example, I use the ladder stitch to attach the snowman's head and body together. I don't really struggle with the ladder stitch when I use it this way, thankfully. <laughs> In addition to sewing, you can also use glue to attach pieces together on plushies. There are two different types of glue that I use on my plushies, which include fabric glue and hot glue. I use tacky glue as my fabric glue. I've never tried any other fabric glues to compare it to, but it seems to work well and get the job done. I'll usually use tacky glue for attaching pieces of material onto the plush as extra detail or decoration. This includes the ice cream, mouth, and cheeks on the narwhal plushie. And then I'll use hot glue for the most part when attaching pieces sewn together that have stuffing inside, such as when I used hot glue to attach the cherry and ice cream cone onto the narwhal and octopus's head. So now you may be wondering when should I sew pieces together and when should I glue them together? Personally, I don't like gluing the whole plush together and I don't usually sew the whole plush together either. If I were making larger projects, I would probably sew the whole plush together, but since I tend to make small plushies, I find using a blend of sewing and gluing the pieces together works the best for me. If I'm attaching two or more pieces together with the intent to fill those pieces with stuffing, I will always sew it together. If I'm adding any pieces onto the plush as extra detail and I want the stitches to be seen, I will sew them on. However, if I'm adding any pieces onto the plush as extra detail that I don't want stitches to be seen, I will typically glue them onto the plush. For example, with the milk carton, I sewed the blue strip on, but then I glued the mouth cheeks and letters on. 
Personally, I like to see some stitches on the plush, so I sewed the blue strip on, but I didn't want to sew on the mouth cheeks or letters because I thought adding stitches to pieces so small would look a bit messy, so instead I glued those pieces on. Again, this is just my approach. There is no right or wrong way to attach your plushies together. I encourage you to try out different methods and find what works best for you. Embroidery is a fun way to add extra detail on the plushies. This can include making details on a leaf like I did on the Deku mask, or spelling out letters like how I wrote I and coffee on the back of the coffee mug. I did not use embroidery thread or floss on the leaf since I actually didn't own any back when I made that plush in 2015, but I did use it on the coffee mug when I embroidered those letters. I think the Deku mask looks really good with the thread that I used, but for example when I stitched some extra details onto the sushi plushies, in my opinion the embroidery thread looks so much better and helped make those details stick out even more. There's embroidery thread and there's embroidery floss. Embroidery thread has two threads spun around each other, whereas embroidery floss has six threads wrapped together. I like to use both of them on my plushies, and right now I really don't have a preference for one over the other for the projects I use it on. Embroidery is a fun way to add even more detail onto the plush and to help make it even more unique. It's important to remember that plushies don't need to just be plushies with no purpose. You can add ribbon to them so you can hang them up, or even add a key ring to them to make them into a keychain. They can be plushie ornaments on a tree, and decorations you can hang up in your room. You can also add a magnet onto them so you can put them up on your refrigerator, or if you're still in school you can put them in your locker. Also when sewing small fell projects, you don't need to only make plushies. You can make so many different other things that I want to mention, such as bookmarks, coasters, pencil toppers, pins, and buttons. Personally, I haven't explored too much outside of sewing plushies as just keychains and magnets, but I would like to experiment with different ideas, and I wanted to share these with all of you to maybe spark some new ideas. It sounds really obvious and extremely cliche, but I promise you it's true. If you want to improve your plushies, you just need to practice. With the experience you'll gain through each sewing project, the better you will get. It just takes time to improve your sewing skills, so don't get discouraged and give up if you're unhappy with how your plushie turned out. Just keep practicing and you will improve in time. I've been sewing for about eight years and I know I still have lots to learn. There is always room for improvement and room to learn something new and grow. And that's it for my 10 tips and tricks to improve your plushies. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please go give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel, and I would really appreciate it. And as always, please go leave future video suggestion ideas down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys, and it would really help me out if I knew what type of videos you guys want from my channel. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you all have a great day. Bye, and I'll see you in the next one.